And what we have here is a very special revenue problem. And why is it special? Well, because it's about Bob, and Bob is shelling, selling shampoo. I guess, okay, that's not why it's special. The reason it's special is Bob uses some real weird rules for prices. And so it takes, us, it takes some kind of special thinking to understand what's going on. And when Bob sells shampoo, if someone buys 0 to 50, do, 50 bottles, Bob just says, you know what, flat two bucks. You're not really buying that much shampoo from me. I'm not giving you a discount. But if they buy more than 50 bottles, Bob is going to reduce the price on every single bottle of shampoo they buy by a penny. You know, he's giving them a discount. If Bob only sells a max of 150 bottles, what's the largest and smallest revenues Bob can make on an order? And so notice I have these kind of two different pricing rules here. I have a pricing rule for 0 to 50, and I have a pricing rule for uh, 50 to 150. And that's really how I'm going to have to break up this problem. And so notice I'm trying to maximize and minimize revenue. And so that's what I'm going to be interested in. But I'm going to do it on just separate intervals. I'm going to say, well, from 0 is less than or equal to Q, it's less than or equal to 50. I'm going to have one set of things. And then between 50 and 150, I'm going to have another set. Now in both cases, the revenue I'm trying to maximize, the way I'm going to start it off is revenue is equal to price times quantity. That's what I'm going to do in both areas. Now in this area, the price is really easy, right? So revenue is equal to 2 times Q. The price in this area is a lot trickier. Right? We kind of have to do something off on the side. We have to say, well, you know what, it starts off at two dollars when he's having fifty, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write I'm gonna do a point slope form like this. Right? It tell we, we know that the the demand well that the that the way is changing price is linear. And so the price at fifty or at fifty bottles here is going to be two dollars so that's my p0 but m so m remember that's your difference in outputs so difference in p divided by difference in q your difference in price is going to be you're lowering by a penny and your difference in quantities is going to be you're increasing by one so if you work this whole thing out you'll get the price is equal to Rather than being just equal to a straight 2, it's going to be equal to negative 0 0.01 times the number of shampoo bottles that he sells plus 2.5. All right, Not pretty, right? This is kind of some crazy thing we have to do off on the side. But at the end, we're able to get our revenue function like we were before, right? So revenue, it's, and rather than being 2 times quantity, this is my price, my negative 0 0.01q plus 2.5 and then all of that is times quantity. I could simplify that a little bit, multiply it out and get this. Now we want to be maximizing revenue, largest and smallest quantities, and we're gonna have to treat each interval separately. So what do we do when we want to maximize? Well we find well where the derivative is equal to zero. So in this case, in, in our zero to 50 case, our prime of q is going to be equal to two. You might say, well, two is never equal to zero, so I'm done there. I don't have to worry about that interval at all. But actually, you do. You're not done yet. You have to worry about your endpoints. You always have to worry about your endpoints in addition to your middle points. So in, we'll need to check r of zero and r of 50 to see if those are maxes or mins. And we'll compare those to the other things we get over here. But r of 0 in this case would be 2 times 0 is 0. And r of 50 in this case would be 2 times 50, which is 100. OK, so now let's come over here. Our prime of q over here would be equal to negative 0 0.02 q plus 2.5. And if we set this thing equal to 0, and solve it, you'll actually find that Q is equal to a hundred and twenty-five. And indeed, if you did a first derivative test here in R prime, you'd see that this thing, the 125, so if we plugged in something to the left 
of 125, we would get positive. If we plugged in something to the right of 125, plugged it into here, we would get a negative, showing that this thing is going to be some sort of a maximum. So we're going to have to come down here. We're going to have to compare the endpoints as well. So we'll check R of 50, which we already know is it's actually going to end up being that. We could plug it in there too, and we'll get 100. We'll check R of 125, and we'll check R of 150. Plugging the 50, 125, and 150 into this formula in our calculator, we'll get 100. 156.25 and 150. Okay, and so what we've done here is we've checked all our critical points in the two intervals, our, our only critical point actually being this one, and we've checked all the endpoints. So the 0, 50 here, and we've checked the 50 and the 150 there. And we've seen that, remember the original question was largest and smallest revenues, that our largest revenue was here, and our smallest revenue was of course zero. Now, so the big idea here was we had to break it up by kind of our different pricing rules, by the rule between here and here, and then just do the same thing we were doing before in terms of finding your revenue function, taking, taking the derivative, and setting the derivative equal to zero to find when it's maximized or minimized. And just a little side note, if you had a problem where it didn't have this over here, where it actually just had the 50 to 150, you can kind of just ignore everything I do on the left side here and just follow my work on the right side.